Paul shepherded a lot of churches, but as the joke goes, there was the good, the bad, and the Corinthians. In this first epistle, Paul describes four or five serious problems going on in this Jesus community, and then responds with how the gospel and Christian love, this very same principle, solves them. In chapter 9, Paul has been addressing the specific issue of whether it is right to eat food that has been offered to idols, a topic that begins in chapter 8. But here in chapter 9, Paul is using this specific Corinthian problem to address a larger issue. How should we, as Christians, think about our own rights and entitlements? And what does it mean to give them up, like Jesus did, for the sake of others? Verse 4, do we not have the right to eat and drink? Do we not have the right to take a believing wife as do the other apostles? Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard without eating any of its fruit? If we have sown spiritual things among you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? Verse 12, if others share this rightful claim on you, do not we even more? Paul is talking about how he has not asked the Corinthians for money. He points out that he could have, those who proclaim the gospel, make their living from the gospel, he writes. But at the end of verse 12, Nevertheless, we have not made use of this right, but we endure anything rather than put an obstacle in the way of the gospel of Christ. Paul goes on to say that he doesn't want to lose his ground for boasting. His reward for preaching is that, quote, I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Think about that for a second. His reward is not receiving what should be his rightful reward. Paul goes on to say, consequently, he now can become all things to all people, a Jew to the Jews and a Gentile to the Gentiles. There is what he is allowed to do in Jesus, and there is what he does for his kingdom. Paul concludes the thought by writing, I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete, or all those who strive for mastery, the Greek here is everyone who agonizes, struggles, they exercise self-control in all things. All of us, though we are not under the law and are free to eat any meat we want, we should discipline ourselves like athletes. If you have been an athlete or if you have friends who are athletes, you know that during training season, they are not a lot of fun to hang out with, are they? But their discipline, their rule of life, results in the achievement of amazing feats. This, Paul is saying, is how we should think of our Christian life. Verse 26 I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating at the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. If we are going to follow the example of Jesus, giving up worldly rewards and pleasures, the context here is sex, money, food, even recognition, then we will need to learn how in exercising self-control in everything, even perhaps giving up those things we deserve. Because even these good things, if you keep reading Paul's letter into chapter 10, can lead to idolatry. Brothers and sisters, may we, like Paul, learn to endure anything rather than to put an obstacle in the way of Christ's gospel.